Okay, now it's counting. Now it's counting. Our next speaker, Arlinda Smith, will be doing project number one from the interpretive reading manual. The project is Read a Story. The purpose of an interpretive reader is to communicate through voice the work of the author. The interpretive reader's goal is to so enthrall the audience with the story that the audience isn't even aware of the reader. The reader makes the story come to life. Help me introduce our Linda Smith with Politically Correct Chicken Little. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and my honored guest today. I've chosen a politically correct version of the folk tale, Chicken Little, by James Farner. Have you ever done something just in case? As you listen to the story of Chicken Little and her friends, you'll see how easy it is to panic and go along with the crowd just in case. Here's a quote by George Orwell that you might think about. Myths which are believed in tend to come true. Now for the story of Chicken Little. Chicken Little lived on a winding country lane surrounded by hollow trees. It should be mentioned here that the name Little was a family name and not a derogatory size based nickname. It was only by sheer coincidence that Chicken Little was also a little shorter than average height. One day, Chicken Little was playing in the road when a gust of wind blew through the trees and an acorn was blown loose and hit Chicken Little squarely on the head. Now, while Chicken Little had a small brain in the physical sense, she did use it to the best of her ability. So when she screamed, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, her conclusion was not wrong, or stupid, or silly, only logically under enhanced. Chicken Little ran down the road, so she came to the house of her neighbor, Penny Penny, who was tending her garden. This was a simple task, since she didn't use any insecticides, herbicides, or fruit and also permitted the native non-edible varieties of wildflowers, sometimes labeled weeds, to mingle with her food crops. So amid the foliage, Penny Penny heard Chicken Little's voice long before she saw her. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Penny Penny stuck her head out from her garden and said, Chicken Little, why are you carrying on so? Chicken Little said, I was playing in the road when a huge chunk of sky fell and landed on my head. See, here's the bump to prove it. There's just one thing to do, said Penny Penny. What's that? said Chicken Little. Go to the bastard, said Penny Penny. Chicken Little said, very puzzled, who for what? Personal injury, discrimination, intentional infliction of emotional distress, negligent infliction of emotional distress, torturous interference, retort of outrage, you name it, and we'll sue for it. Good gracious, the little chicken little, what will we get for all of that? We can get payment for pain and suffering, compensatory damages, punitive damages, disability and disfigurement, long-term care, mental anguish, impaired earning power, and the loss of self-esteem. Person, oh person, said Chicken Little joyfully, who are we going to see? Who? Well, I don't think the sky, per se, is recognizable as a suitable entity by the state, said Penny Penny. I guess we should go find a lawyer and learn who is suitable, said Chicken Little, for diminutive brain working overtime. 
That's a good idea. And while we're there, can I ask whom to sue for these ridiculously bony legs of mine? They cause me nothing but anguish and embarrassment my whole life, and I should somehow be compensated for all that. So they ran down the hill until they came to the house of their neighbor, Goosey Lucy. Goosey was busy teaching her canine animal companion to be grass so she could avoid the guilty feelings that came with feeding the dog processed animal carcasses from cans. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Sue the bastard! Sue the bastard! Lucy Goosey leaned over her fence and said, Land's sake, why are you two carrying on so? I was playing in the road when a piece of sky fell on my head, exclaimed Chicken Little. So we're going to find a lawyer to tell us whom we can sue, both for her injuries and for my bony legs. Oh good, can I come and sue someone for my long, gangly neck? You know, nothing really flatters it, so I am convinced that there is a conspiracy within the fashion industry against long neck waterfowl. So the three of them ran down the road looking for assistance. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Sue the bastards! Sue the bastards! Smash the conspiracy! Smash the conspiracy! Further down the road, they met Foxy Loxy, who was dressed in a blue business suit and carried a briefcase. He held up a pot to halt the entourage. And what are the three of you doing out on a lovely day like this? asked Foxy Loxy. We're looking for someone to sue, they shouted in unison. What are your grievances? Personal injury? Discrimination? Intentional infliction of emotional distress? Negligent inflection of emotional distress? Tortious interference? The tort of outrage. Oh, yes, 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 the three said excitedly. All that and more. Well then, you're in luck, said Foxy Loxy. My caseload has just eased up, so I will be able to represent you in any and all lawsuits that we can manage to bring. The trio cheered and slapped their wings. Chicken Little said, But who are we going to sue? Without missing a beat, Foxy Loxy says, Who aren't we going to sue? Half those victims such as yourselves will be able to find more guilty parties than you can shake a grit at. Now let's step into my office so we can discuss this further. Foxy Waxy walked over to the small black metal door that was set inside a small hill nearby. Step right this way, he said, as he lifted the hatch. But the black door wouldn't open. Foxy Loxy tugged on it with one paw and then with both paws, and it still wouldn't budge. He yanked and pulled violently, cursing the door, its mental abilities, and its sexual history. Finally, the door swung open and a huge ball of fire shot out. This was really the door to Foxy Loxy's oven. But unfortunately for him, the ball of fire engulfed his head, burned off every hair and whisker, and left him totally out of time. Chicken Little, Henny Penny, and Goofy Lucy ran away, thankful they had not been devoured. However, the family of Foxy Loxy caught up with them. In addition to suing the manufacturer of the oven door, on behalf of Foxy Loxy, the family brought suit against the three above named barnyard fowl in trap claiming entrapment, reckless endangerment, and fraud. <coughs> the family sought payment for pain and suffering, 
compensatory damages, punitive damages, disability, and disfigurement, long-term care, <coughs> mental anguish, impaired earning power, the loss of self-esteem, the loss of a good dinner. The three birds later brought a town to, and they've all been battling in court from that day to this. Mr. Postman.